Okay, so by popular demand, I was requested to do a central limit theorem example uh, where the original population distribution was uniform. So let's give this one a shot that I've got. So it says, suppose that the time a street light is red is uniformly distributed with the shortest time being 10 seconds and the longest being 65. You are, you are trying to determine what would the probability be that a randomly selected 32 times at a stoplight would be less than 22 seconds. You would also like to know what the middle 80% would be for the sampling distribution. Okay, so we've got both a probability question here and a quantile question. Let's start off uh, with establishing a little bit of information. So we know that this is uniformly distributed with the minimum being 10 and the maximum being 65. So those are the minimum and the maximum. And let's go ahead and do the expected value of the uniform distribution. And that is going to be, we do, it's the 65 plus 10. Let's go ahead and put that whole thing in parentheses and divide by two. And so if we do that, 65 plus 10 and divide by two, we get 37.5 as our mean. And then let's keep on going and we can say that the variance of our random variable, I, this one is that, it's that weird one, it's the 65 minus 10, we're going to square it, and then we're going to divide by 12, and I'm just going to copy and paste this real quick, and for the variance we get 252 and some odd uh, decimals. Now, one thing that I will caution you all on is that now sometimes when we're dealing with big numbers, uh, we actually don't have enough decimal places. So let's go ahead and use a little bit of code that'll help us out. We can do uh, options digits equals 12. Now when we type this and hit enter in our studio, the answers that we get are instead of being out to six decimal places are now going to be out to our six significant figures is now 12 significant figures. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to copy this. And I'll just say that we can do once again, the variance of x is equal to that. Okay, so that is from our original population distribution where now I've got the mean and the variance. Okay, so and that is, uh, let me put this up here. This is like the distribution of x. Okay, so now what we want to do though is look at the distribution of x bar. Okay, now for the first thing that, that we want to do is we want to we want to be able to invoke the central limit theorem. If the original distribution is not normally distributed, then we need to have a sufficiently large sample size. And in order for that to be true for our class, we've decided that our cutoff is at is at 30. We need to be 30 or above to be able to invoke the central limit theorem. We have 32 selected times, so we're good. So we know that x bar is going to be normally distributed. Okay, and then the next part, we want to put in the mean. Well, the nice thing is that the mean is the same thing as above. That's the interesting thing about the central limit theorem is that the central limit theorem um, says that the, that the sampling distribution is going to be normally distributed about the original population mean. Okay, now we've got to figure out though, how are we going to get the sampling um, the sampling variance. Okay, so the sampling variance, uh, let me go ahead and I'll put that up here. We'll do sigma x bar, and that is going to be equal to the variance sigma squared divided by n. Okay, so let's just take our variance now. So we've got this variance here. And we're going to divide it by our sample size of 32. And here is our sampling variance. And now I can drop that in right on the inside. Remember that in this shorthand notation, it goes the mean and the variance. Okay, but let's go ahead and let's talk about, we'll put in mu and we'll put in, uh, hold on, this should be sigma squared x bar or we can do like the variance here. I'm going to change this. 
variance with respect to x bar. So we've got mu. That one is still 37.5. And now we can do sigma with respect to x bar. And I can just take the square root of the, uh, of the variance of the sampling distribution. So I'm just going to take the square root of this guy right here. And I get this smallish number, 2.81 or so. And that is going to be my x bar. Okay, now I want to look at like my x bar of critical, my critical x bar, what I'm interested in. And it is at 22 seconds. All right, so we've got all the information now that we need to answer for question one. So let's come up to our commander. We can go to distributions we can go to our continuous distributions, normal distribution, and we want to do a probability because it's asking so what's the probability that a randomly selected 32 times at a stoplight would be less than 22 seconds. Great, so we're going to come up here and let's clear this out. So first things first, our mean is going to be 37.5. Our standard deviation is going to be this sampling standard deviation, not the standard deviation or the variance uh, from the population, but from our sampling. We have to take into account how big our sample size is. And we were able to do that right here where we took the square root of the sampling uh, variance that gives us the sampling standard deviation, which is exactly what we want to put here. Uh, oh, yeah. So I put in a whole bunch of decimals and then the variable value. This is like our critical point. This is from the point of where we are interested in. We're interested in from 22. Now we've got to determine, are we interested in upper tail or a lower tail? Well, it says we want to know what's the probability that these 32 times at the stoplight would be less than 22 seconds. Okay, so we want the lower tail then. Okay, so we're going to do lower tail and I'm going to click OK. Coming over here, I have an insanely low probability. Let me write out this probability statement. Probability that x is going to be less than 22, right, is equal to, so we'll do that probability. It's really, really, really small. And we should be able to see that from our, let's make a plot real quick. We'll do a normal distribution, plot the normal. So we know that the mean is going to be 37.5. We have this is our standard deviation. And we will, I'll just click OK on this guy. OK, and here is the plot. All right, so we've got the mean at 37. Now check out where 22 would be. Like we'd have to march like way over here, like if we continued out our distribution, for us to even see where 22 is. The probability that it's going to be less than 22 uh, is essentially zero when we take a sample size of 32. Okay, so let's, let's modify this first one just a little bit. Let's say instead of we said 22, let's say instead we put in 32 seconds. That those 32 times would be. Uh, that's a little confusing. We'll do 33 seconds. Okay, so all we've got to do is change now this from 32 or 22. We're going to make this 33. We'll do another whack at this guy. Okay, and it's going to be less than 33. Now let's give this one a shot. Let's go to our normal distribution on our probabilities. We're going to change this from 22 to 33. What's the probability of being less than 33 seconds? Click OK on that. And I've got about 5%. Now let me show you where that one would lie on that graph. So let's go make another graph real quick. And I am going to put from, or we'll go from 0 to 33, because we want to do 33 and less. And so I'll just click OK there. And we can see that, yeah, from this spot of about 33 to the left, that's about 5% of our distribution. All right, so less than 22, basically zero. Less than 33, right around 5%. Okay, so 
Let's do question number two now. So question number two. It wants to know where the middle 80% is. Okay, so in order to find the middle 80%, so let's look at our standard, or our, yeah, our distribution. We kind of want the middle 80%. Wherever would that lie on our graph? Now we can we can leverage some information that we know about the normal distribution. We know that the normal distribution is symmetrical, which means that there is 50% of the data to the left of the mean and 50% of the data under the curve to the right of the mean. Okay, so if we want to find the middle 80%, we want to go 40% to the left and 40% to the right. And that would capture our middle 80%. So our critical points are going to be, so we can do this, so this is like a little cheat that you can do. 80 divided by 2, that's going to equal 0 0.4. And then for the high point, high is going to be equal to 0 0.5 plus 0.4. And that equals 0.9. And then the low is going to be equal to 0.5 minus 0 0.4. And that is going to equal 0.1. So now we've got what the top and the bottom. So if we go from the so if we go from 10% to the left and then 90% to the left and we subtract those probabilities from each other, we'll be left with the middle 80%. Here's what it's going to look like. So let's go to our distributions, continuous. So since we are asked to provide critical values and we we've been given a percentage, we want to go use the quantiles. Okay, so from here, I'm going to put in 0.9 because that's my high, and I'm going to put 0.1 as my low. My mean is still this 37.5, and the standard deviation, i got to go copy that again. Remember, this is the sampling standard deviation. Okay, and we are going to put that in right here. Okay, and I'm going to do both of these from the lower tail. So 10% to the left, then 90% to the left, subtract those two, and I'll be left with the middle 80%. Okay, and then I'm going to just go ahead and click OK. And it's going to give me, uh, give me just a second, I want that plot still. Okay, so notice what it gives me. So I, I kind of misspoke. We don't actually have to subtract those um, those probabilities from each other because we were given those probabilities. We wanted the middle 80%, but we did want to know these critical values of where they would be. So I got that 0.9 and that 0.1, and here is what I'm left with. That the upper, the upper limit of that 80% is going to be that 41, and the lower limit is going to be this 33. Let's go ahead and plot this one more time. So let's go to, oops, give me just a second. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Oh, it's going to be angry at me. Let's see if I can't. Let me try to restart it real quick. Okay. Okay, give me just a second. Let's see if I can get my R Commander back up and going. I looks like I'm gonna to have to do a restart real quick. There we go. Okay. because I really do want to plot this to show you that it really does, what we did has captured the upper and lower bounds for that middle 80%. So if we go to distributions, normal, plot that normal, mean 37.5, just make sure I type that in right, standard deviation, let's copy and paste that in. So let's go, here it is. And then copy this upper. 
copy the lower and let's shade this I don't know something better that looks okay and we will click OK and look at that that gives us the middle 80% of the data where it um, where these guys lie so that uh, that's about it on how you would kind of go about doing this so we started off once again with our uniform distribution we found the expected value or the mean and we found the variance of the original distribution then we went from there and we were able to determine the mean and the sampling variance of our sampling distribution of X bar Then we found the mean and the sampling standard deviation which is just the square root of the sampling variance and then we had some critical values we found the probabilities being less than that and we found like a middle 80 percent one uh, and that's that's about it so if you've got some more questions feel free to email me and to to make an another video i'd be more than happy to and good luck on your homework